the case you guys, my name is Reba Lear, back a reaction video for today. For today, guys, we're going to be reacting to the sleepover story, scary story animated. So, have I ever been to a sleepover before? Yes, obviously. Have I been to a sleepover when I was a kid? Yes. But was it with my friends? Never. Never. I have never had a sleepover with my friends. Ever. Even when I was a kid and I had friends and stuff like that. I never had a sleepover. I just never did. And it's because of the fact that I think my mom just never wanted me to go over to their house because you can you never know what parents can do nowadays. And I'm actually glad that I never slept over at any kid's house because like shoot, the stuff that be going around uh, going on lately and everything, like it's it's pretty clocked up. But I've been to sleepovers with my cousin and stuff like that, obviously, so um and that's pretty chill, obviously. Like, it, 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 it's pretty lit. But let's get right into the video. Comment down below your opinions. And, uh, yeah, let's get it. Written by Sam Haysom. Haysom. Is that how you say it? George yawned. He was obviously bored. He'd agreed to come round mine for a sleepover because I was new at school and he wanted to see what kind of house I lived in, get a sense of what I was like. Okay. But I could tell he was already regretting the decision. Oh, shoot. I thought you said you had a PS4. George's eyes flicked around the bedroom. Yeah. If he was hoping the console would magically appear from somewhere. We'd been upstairs since dinner. It explored my room, and we chatted for a bit, then watched some random shows on Netflix. Huh. Things were going okay at first. But as the last light bled out of the day, and the sky outside darkened, I could tell George was losing interest. That was when I suggested we do something... a bit different. Huh? Nah. I don't have one, I said. Sorry. Are you still up for having a go at this game, though? What game? What? Telling each other stories. Isn't that little kid stuff? You George. guys are kids, though, so shut the frick up and get with the program, or you can get out of my freaking house. Glanced at the watch on his wrist. I followed his gaze. George's watch was the first thing I noticed about him. He sits in front of me in English, and I spotted the watch after a ray of sunlight glinted off its face and caught what my eye. What is it, G-Shock? A G-Shock? It's a really nice watch. A G-Shock. Most of the kids in my year have digital watches, those blocky ones that light up when you press a button on the side. But George's watch was different. More adult. It was one of the reasons I'd picked George to invite over. So <laughs> what? That fool seems hey, like an asshole. Can I try your watch on? George looked up at me and frowned. What? Your watch. Can I try it on? It's really nice. George stared at me for a second longer. Sorry. I don't let anyone try my watch on. My dad says I'm not allowed. He glanced around the room once more, <laughs> his eye going from the door to the dark window. He sighed. Okay, let's play this dumb game then. What do I have to do? Bruh! Ignoring the bored look on his face, I smiled. It's really easy. We just take turns telling each other a scary story. Like oh my gosh! The scariest story you can possibly think of. Oh, this is not going to be good, then, bruh. Whoever's is the scariest wins the game. George rolled his eyes. I don't know any scary stories. Besides, I think I might get some sleep soon. I'm pretty tired. Come on. Just one each. You must know at least one scary story. Everyone does. Oh, thanks. I know loads of good ones. Oh my gosh. George's For a kid to know loads of good, loads of scary stories is a person you don't want to mess with. I'm telling you right now, if there's a kid out there that knows so much freaking scary stories that young, I'm hauling ass. The frick? I don't give a damn how old you are. I'm hauling ass. Face for a reaction. Unless you're one of those kids that frightens easily, that is, then I guess you might not like the game. It was a risk, but George bit. I'm not scared of anything. I've watched horror films with my big brother that are rated 18. We even found one on YouTube that's been banned, and I still watched it. <laughs> I didn't say anything. 
Which one was it? looked back at George and smiled. After a few seconds, he let out another sigh. Fine, let's play a stupid game then. But after you're done failing to scare me, that's it. I'm going to bed. Hi. Right. George went first. His story wasn't bad, in fairness. It was one he said his uncle told him a couple of years back. Nothing I hadn't heard before. Basically, there are two kids, and one of them gets hit by a car and dies. Oh, shoot. Sure. After the funeral, the mother gives the surviving kid some money to go get liver from the store. Something to cook up for dinner. Uh. Because he's sick in the head, though, the kid pockets the money, digs up his brother, and removes his liver instead. Whoa! Then... Later that night, the dead brother rises from his grave to come and get the kid in his sleep. Damn! It's a decent enough story, but I'd heard it a hundred times already. That's cocked! I didn't let on though. I made all the right faces and jumped at the right parts. Duh. George got quite into it. He gestured his arms and his watch glinted in the light from my bedside. Bro, he's loving this. He's, he's using... He's giving this full confidence too. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah, you already heard the four, you already heard it before. Why the frick are you? Well, I guess just so you can make it more fun. But that's clucked. That's you're clucked. Yeah, there's something wrong with that kid. Bad lamp. His blonde hair spilled across his forehead. He was so into the story, he didn't seem to notice. After it was over, he sat back and grinned. I thought you were gonna stop crying at one point. He said, "You might as well give up now, anyway. I'm not scared of anything." Oh, really? I looked across the room at him. The house was quiet now and had been for a few hours. Yikes. When we'd first come upstairs, there was still noise coming from below. The faint sound of the TV in the lounge. The rattle of plates being put away in the kitchen. Okay, it's so the parents. There was only silence. Beyond the bedroom window, tree branches rustled in the wind. The occasional car passed by on the road outside. The that frick is it. that? Is that blood on the corners? I grinned at George. So. Oh, frick. You're not scared of anything at all? Oh, Lord. Nope. This fool's about to say something Nothing. so clucked. Not even stories that are true? Oh, my gosh, bro. This fool's about to go off on your ass. This fool is so confident on telling stories that are true. I bet you it's about him. I bet you it's about him. George let out a bark of laughter. Ha, huh, nice try. Just hurry up and get it over with, will you? I'm already bored. Such a stupid ass up. Fine. My story is about a family, I began. Uh. A family that looks normal enough on the outside, but isn't really normal at all. George rolled his eyes again. He was starting to annoy me quite a lot by now, but I didn't let on. I just carried on with the story as if I hadn't noticed. This family moves around a lot. They never stay in one place for too long. That's him! They can't, you see. That's the kid! They're good at disguising themselves. That's the kid right there! He's right there! That's him! They're a clocked up family! They're a clocked up family! They're good at hiding their secret, but they still can't go taking risks. If they stayed in one place for more than a week, they might get found out. Someone might discover what they really are. So, what are they then? George asked. I wanted to tell George not to interrupt, to just sit still and listen to the story, but I bit down the urge. Instead, I just grinned at him. Whoa! The family are monsters, I said. They're all monsters. They travel from town to town, and they leave a trail of dead kids wherever they go. What the frick? I paused, expecting George to interrupt me again, but he didn't. He only stared back at me with a dull, blank expression. The family has a very specific way of doing things, I continued. Why? When they move into a new area, they find a house that's been left unoccupied. Not a completely empty house. Just one where the people that normally live there are off on holiday or something. One that'll be empty for a week or two. The family doesn't need long. A couple of weeks suits them just fine. Oh my gosh. So, they break into this house 
and then they go about setting the trap. It's their own kid they use. They send him off to make friends in the neighborhood, round the nearby parks, maybe off to the local school under a fake name. Tell him to get to know- Boy, if you don't know that this is the kid that's doing this? Bro, do you know what's so crazy too? I knew this kid was clocked from the beginning. What the frick? Are you kidding me? Okay, let's just say that I was a kid and I did go to this kid's house and I didn't know and I thought the family was perfectly normal. As soon as he said that this is a, about a family that moves from town to town because they do clucked up things, I would have been like, okay, um, I'm pretty tired right now, so I'm going to just uh, leave. But I'll be like, no, no, I'll, I'm, a, I'm a fake being sick. I was like, okay, I'm feeling pretty sick right now. Uh. This is, I'll be I'll be doing whatever just to get the frick out of there. Call my parents real quick. Tell my parents to come as as fast as possible because I feel like I'm in danger and then act like I'm sick. Stuff like that. This and that. Bruh. Oh my goodness. The other kids. The family is hungry by this point. Really hungry? Badly hungry. Hungry by they what? They don't do anything just yet. They've learned to be patient. I paused and took a breath. This was a story I'd told before, but I found I liked it more and more with each retelling. The trick was not to rush, though. You had to savor it. I'd opened the bedroom window when we first came upstairs, and uh, a draft of cold- Good! That's when you can haul ass out the window! Don't care if you break a- br like, break a bone or something. Haul ass and run and call your- bro, yell out help. Like, what the frick? Cold air blew in. It ruffled the curtains behind George. Tree branches shook in the garden outside, the leaves whispering to each other. George watched me, not saying anything. Oh, damn. I had his attention. Yeah, he's scared. His parents don't have to wait long, I continued. They never do. They've trained the kid well, you see. He's not just a victim in all this. Oh. He may only be young. But he knows how the game works. Of course. Once the family has been in the area for a little while, a few days, maybe a week at most, the kid makes his choice. He picks a new friend to invite back to their house. Okay. The parents okay. give him an incentive too. Woo! He's still too young to share the tastes they have. Mm. They tell him that's something he'll only acquire when he gets older. Oh lord. But he still gets something out of it. What, what does he get out of it? George's eyes were fixed on mine as his knees began to fidget. Enjoyment! Fidget. Enjoyment! He gets the other kid's stuff, I replied. Whoever he picks, he gets to keep all their belongings. <laughs> the after watch! His parents the watch! Finished with them. Somewhere in the house below us, a door slammed. George's eyes flicked away from mine towards the bedroom door, then back again. I smiled at him. <laughs> You're locked. You're locked in the house. There's no escape for you except for the window. So haul ass right now because it looks like you're bigger than this kid. So you know what you got to do. Haul ass now. So George kept his eyes on me as he tried to formulate the question. So what exactly what exactly do the parents do with the kids they take? They kill them. They oh, body them. They eat them. I replied. Whoa! Can Whoa! They eat their insides. They tear the kids open while they're still screaming, and they pull out their guts and intestines by the handful. Yikes! They everything down until there's nothing left but a husk. I grinned. Somewhere below us, a floorboard creaked. The sound was faint and muffled, and I don't think George heard it. Oh my Can you imagine gosh, what someone bruh. looks like when they've had everything inside them removed? Oh, I'm crying, I'm crying. I'm, I'm, like I'm, I have tears. I'm tearing up, bro. I'm tearing up. I'm tearing up, bro. Every time I freak out way too much, bro, and I can't, like, I'm tearing up. I tear up. I'm not crying. I'm not. Kid you not, I'm not crying. But I'm tearing up, bro. Oh my gosh. It's just too freaking clucked. It's like the stuff a snake leaves behind when it sheds its skin. Oh my goodness. The glow from the bedside lamp made George's skin look pale. Oh my His goodness, bro. His lips slightly parted as he stared at me. Haul ass. But 
how do they get away with it, he asked. Don't the parents of the kids that get taken come looking for them the next day? When their kids don't show up back home? I grinned back at George. I'd been hoping he'd ask this. Oh, the family's long gone by that point, I said. They vanish like shadows in the night. The only thing they take with them is the remains of the dead kid. Woo! And when their the parents remains. come looking for them the next day, all they find is a locked house that belongs to somebody else. Oh my gosh, Another bro. floorboard creaked. It was louder this time. Oh my gosh, bro. both heard it. The sound had come from the corridor outside the bedroom. George's eyes darted in the direction of the door. What was that? Oh, that was nothing. <laughs> this, <laughs> yo, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh my gosh, bro. I can't. My eyes, bro. I'm freaking tearing up. Bro, this fool's talking about where... What's that freaking noise? Oh! That was nothing. You about to get bodied now. You about to die. We about to eat you. Cannibalism. 2020. Hashtag cannibalism. For like, like, the frick. Literally. Damn, bro. Holy frick. Look at this guy's face. He enjoys this. And he's a kid. That's clucked. That's clucked in the head, ladies and gentlemen. I lied. Probably just the house settling. There's nothing to be scared of, George. Yes, there is. I eyed the watch on his wrist. Oh my gosh! I imagine what it would look like on mine. From the corridor outside came the soft sound of approaching footsteps. Oh goodness. Woo! Woo! Frick is going on. Yep, you're clocked. What the frick is that? What the frick is those noises? Join the Nightmare Tales community and Patreon. What the frick? Yeah, that kid got clocked. That kid got clocked, bro. I would have, as soon as he even told the first part of the story, I would have been like, yeah, I know what the frick is going on, so I need to find a way to escape the frick and get the frick out of this place. Oh my goodness. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Okay, but uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video. This was actually, this was good. This was good. Like, it was hella scary, but... It was, like, pretty good. I can't lie. But I'll catch you guys in the next video. Smash that like button. And, uh, yeah. Have a great day. And if you have a kid that's like this, you know what to do. Haul ass before it ever happens. Haul ass. Don't go near that haul ass. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace.